The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, one of the scribes came up and asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Thursday of the ninth week in ordinary time of year A. The Gospel reading that we have today invites us to reflect on our priorities in life. In the gospel passage of today, one of the scribes asked Jesus a question, which is the greatest commandment of all? It was normal that the disciple would ask such a question from a rabbi. It is an innocent question to discover what is essential to please God and obtain eternal salvation. Knowing that the scribe was sincere and honest, Jesus gave him a frank answer, telling him the two primary and essential commandments. The first one is to love God, and the second one is to love a neighbor. Here Jesus quoted the book of Deuteronomy for the first commandment, the love of the one true God. The Jews were instructed by Moses that the Lord alone is God and that as our God is unique. So the basic human response to God must also be unique and undivided. Jesus clearly said that a person has to love God with one heart, soul, and strength. It means the entire person must love God who loves every person entirely. To this he added the second greatest commandment, a person must love his neighbor as he would love his own self, as given in the book of Leviticus. This commandment was not new to the audience that was with Jesus. What was new was that, was that Jesus went to build an extremely intimate bond between the love of God and neighbor. In Christian charity, people and God are not merely side by side. They are inseparable one. This idea presented by Jesus was totally new. And another facet of newness was that Jesus gave a completely new interpretation of neighbor. Because in the time of Leviticus, it meant Hebrews only. Hebrews only were neighbors. For Jesus, it included every member of the human race. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the personal lesson that is visible from today's gospel to every Christian is that the solid foundation of our Christian religion is love of God and neighbor. We need to love God with our, all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds and with all our strength. And Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Loving God requires that we submit our hearts, minds, and strength to him. This is not strange to us because we have heard this many times. The question is, how much of my heart is free to love as expansively as God loves me? Maybe not all my heart and my soul is available to love because it is preoccupied. And that's a very big question today that we need to reflect upon. Jesus says, love with our whole hearts, minds, and souls. But maybe my mind is filled with evil thoughts. My heart is distracted by worldly issues. Pope Francis calls these many preoccupations the hidden idols in our lives. There are so many of them that hinder us from loving God and neighbor. When I, instead of thinking about God, connecting with God and neighbor, I think of my own needs and what others think of me. These are idols in my heart and mind. Maybe I cannot love with all my heart because a large segment of my heart is filled with resentments or judgments of other people. Perhaps I use the space in my heart and mind to nurse my grudges or tend past wounds that I have. How much anger fills my heart with those I refuse to forgive, for example? How do we free up that occupied space in our hearts so that we can love God with our whole selves? We need to do that. We want to focus our whole minds and hearts, but how? How can we free our minds and hearts? If we begin to focus by making a commitment to daily prayer, that promise can have a profound effect on our lives. It is very, very important to do that. Prayer, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is a relationship with a real loving entity a God who loves us more than we can imagine. The shift, this shift happens when we move from saying prayers to praying in the sense of entering into a personal relationship. You see, sometimes there is temptation to say prayers, especially as Catholics, because our prayers are well designed. Okay, they are good. They are profitable, but we need to find time where we can be with God, myself and God alone. We need to enter into a certain closeness with him, a certain intimacy with the Lord, so that we can be together. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, loving God requires also us to be preoccupied with the, the good of others. That's what Jesus says today in the gospel. Love God and neighbor. So we also need to be preoccupied with the good of our friends. The law tells us we cannot harm the life or name, or name of another person. This is because every person belongs to God. It is God who gave him life, who gave him all her life, and the source, the same God, has given us the command to love and respect all people. To interfere with a person's life is interfering with God's rights and disobeying his commands. We need to think about this. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to love means to go beyond ourselves. We need to go beyond ourselves. Truly to face another person that is there. To rise above our own need to strengthen or to stretch out to someone, to see the face of those who desperately need our love, to risk discomfort, to give our time and energy, and indeed to give ourselves to others. Love involves total giving and the sacrificing of oneself. There is no question of sharing only a part 
or to love when the person feels good. It is true that love has to do with the feelings, but it has far more to do with commitment. And that commitment is required, especially this time when our friends are going through tough times. We need to commit ourselves to reach out to them and help them. Love requires or challenges us. It requires us to let go. Wholehearted loving does not stop at any time and it cannot be done with. It has to do with being there for the other person. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, being more aware of our relationship with God will naturally make us more aware of our neighbor. When we are no longer looking inward at ourselves and at our needs, we have love of God and the strength to help us look beyond ourselves. With a stronger relationship with Jesus, we can open our eyes to those who need us the most. We can, give, we can forgive those who have wronged us. We can love those who are most unlovable. All of these are the neighbors Jesus wants us to love as the, the invitation today. As we reflect on this reading and the words of Jesus today, let us ask the grace that we may put God on first position in our lives and also let us ask that we be helped to extend our love to all and that we discover the presence of Jesus in our brothers and sisters, especially those, those that are in need. May God bless you all. Amen.